Welcome to Dale's Daily Devotionals. Today have I got one for you. We're going to talk about revival. In Psalm 85 and 6, it says, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? What is revival? What does it mean to be revived? Well, when our spirits begin to get tired and weak because of the stress and the pressures of this life, we sometimes falter and we sometimes begin to walk away from what we know is really the truth. We talked last week about our faith and how our faith builds us up and how it is through our faith, our complete trust and dependence in God that we're changed and we're transformed. However, sometimes when our faith begins to grow weak, it's not that we've backslidden. It's not that we've walked away from God but it's that our trust in him starts to diminish slowly and slowly. At that point in our lives, we need a revival. We need a resurgence of his power, of his glory. We need to be reminded of who he is. We need to be reminded of what he has done for us. And so we do that by a few things. For, by one, we get back into the word of God. When we get out of the word and we stop studying the word, our faith begins to waver. So we dig back into the word of God. When we do that, we come to church. Sometimes when we go through those times in our lives, we kind of, maybe we haven't been to church as much. Maybe we've kind of slacked off on church. And that's really where we come to grow and get our strength together because we draw strength from one from another. Yes, you can serve God at home. I've heard that. You can. If you couldn't, then I would feel sorry for the people who are in nursing homes, people who are bed bound. If you couldn't serve God at home, you'd have a problem. However, the people who serve God must serve God together. They draw strength from one another. As a hospice chaplain, I see a lot of people who are homebound. They'd be in trouble if they couldn't serve God at home. But how about you? Are you serving God at home? Or are you just saying, I can serve God at home? We need to draw strength from one another. Getting together with Christians who are like-minded, studying the word of God together, growing together, that's how we find ourselves to draw our strength from one another to be able to grow in God. That's one part of revival. The other part of revival is sometimes this life just gets to be overwhelming. It's taxing on us. And it's difficult. And when we have those times in our life, it is then that we really need to seek the Lord with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole soul, and our whole strength, and go back after him. How do we do that? We pray for revival. Oh God, would you revive us again? Oh God, would you remind us of what you've already done for us? Let me shut out the things of this world and the troubles and the trials and let me just remember how faithful you are, how you saved me, how you forgave me, how you washed away my sins, you cleansed me and you made me whole, how you died on the cross for me while I was yet a sinner. You still loved me, you changed me, you transformed me. Whoa, man, when you begin to think of the goodness of God, when you begin to think of how he set you free, how he broke the chains of bondage off of your life, how can we not start to feel a surgence of revival? People wonder why I get a little excited and I get a little emotional when I preach. They wonder why I, 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 I raise my voice. I raise my voice not because I'm angry, not because I'm mad, but because I'm excited. Because when I get excited, I get a little emotional. I'm excited because even though I was yet a sinner, God loved me. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for my sins. And it does, it done something inside of my heart. It changed me. It transformed me. And it made me different. It made me to become a different man than what I was. I don't see myself the same way I used to see myself. And my friend, that's what revival will do inside of you once your spirit comes revived. But you can't be revived in something that you've never had. So first, you have to receive a new life in Christ. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And once you've done that, you don't need a revival. Once you've really accepted Christ, you'll know in your heart you're not just following something because you know you have an emptiness. You have a void. You have a longing in your heart. I've actually heard somebody tell me one time, and it broke my heart. I heard her say, I, I have no faith. I, 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 I kind of sometimes I'm jealous because of, of other people and their faith, but I don't have a faith. 
Man, that breaks my heart to think that somebody doesn't have a faith, to not have something to believe in, and not just something, but someone to believe in, to know that Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for your sins. If you're a Christian already and that doesn't move you or motivate you, then something in you is broken. And it's time for us to repent, do our first works over, get back to God and ask him like they said in Psalm 80, 85 and 6, will you revive us again that we may rejoice in thee? It's time to rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in his salvation, rejoice in his deliverance, and let God be the Lord of our lives once again. Then we'll see things like happening in Ferguson and Baltimore begin to go by the wayside as we begin to put our faith and trust and dependence back in God as a people, as a church, and as a nation. God bless you. Don't forget to share this video with your friends if it's touched your hearts today. God bless and have a good day.